Hey everyone, I'm Nita from ketogenicwoman.com. I'm going to have a slightly different format today because I'm learning how to shoot videos all by myself. <laughs> I'm trying to shoot my own video today. Which, which is funny. I mean, I've been really lucky. I started this channel about a year ago and I had, because of COVID, <laughs> I had access to people and equipment and I still have access to them, but you know, they have lives and busy doing other things. And so I have to learn how to do some of this stuff on my own, uh, sometimes with only one camera instead of, you know, the luxury of two or three angles. Um, and that's okay. Uh, because you know it's not it's not about that. I'm, I hope you are liking my content and can be, and I know you can be. I, I, I know that it's not all about you know the bells and whistles and, and having all the proper light and all that stuff. So so here I am uh, learning this on my own. So um, today I'm going to show you. I'm gonna do some cookie stuff today. If you saw my last video, which was yesterday, I made some coconut macaroons. This was a wholesome yum recipe. And uh, I have linked, in that video, I, I've linked her recipe and, and you know used her products for this. And, and I'm a big fan. And uh, the cookies are good. They are chewy and moist. They are like the ones I remember from my childhood. So um, check out that, uh, I'll link that video from yesterday below. It should be live by now. I also made <laughs> kind of a failure. So these are me trying to recreate my mother's almond macaroons. I don't know if that's even the right word. Uh, they were meringue cookies that contained a lot of almonds and they were just a little chewier and moister in the middle than what I've been able to get. She probably had a secret ingredient but as I explained in the video every time I talk to her about anything you know things are things are different because she does have dementia. She's in a nursing home and uh, you know it, it's challenging and uh, but I really would like to recreate these. But these ones, I also had a baking issue, uh, which I explained in the other video as to another reason why maybe, so maybe I'm gonna try the same recipe again, not today, but you know, I'm kind of, I have to buy more almonds for one thing. Um, anyways, that's in that video as well that I'll link below. What I haven't shown you yet are these cookies. Believe it or not, these are all the same recipe. And I'm going to actually show you one of them today. So, um, so my two favorite, okay, so what these are is chocolate chip cookies using uh, protein powder as the base. There's, I can't do almond flour, it almost kills me with stomach cramps. So, I have to look for cookie recipes for Christmas that don't use almond flour. I have actually, you know, shortbread cookies on my site using, on my website using almond flour. Um, other recipes using almond flour. You know, I used to use it, I used to go through those big Costco bags of almond flour, um, especially at Christmas time. So I'm looking for alternatives. So what this is, uh, the idea came from uh, Keto Carnivorish Chris. She has a protein powder cookie recipe and I saw her do that. And I thought, oh, brilliant. Um, I'm gonna play with that recipe. And at, pretty much at the same time, I also saw Nina at Discover Sustainable. She used that same recipe from Crystal and she used keto chow. And Janet Greta had very kindly sent me some bags of keto chow. Uh, I had some mocha and chocolate and stuff like that. And so, so I, so, okay, so let me tell you what this is. This is a rest, this is a, they're all chocolate chip cookies. They all have chocolate, this one went really flat. This one, I made the mistake of using uh, allulose in it. And as you know, allulose has browning like crazy. 
and softening properties too much for a cookie. This cookie went completely flat and, um, and because, because it browned so quickly it started to burn around the edges. I didn't throw them away, they still taste good. This cookie is more like uh, Crystal's recipe from Keto Carnivorish Chris and I will link that below because it's, it's a good recipe. This, uh, the, like I, she put her chocolate chips on top and baked it that way and, and maybe I'd consider doing that. I, I just put them all in. Um, so this one does have chocolate chips in it and I used a, I used, my son brought over some protein, chocolate protein powder for me to use, uh, Way Gourmet, and you can get it at any grocery store, like all the local grocery stores around here sell that one right, right on the shelf. So that one's an easy one to get. And this chocolate chip cookie is, is really good. I, I, I actually really like it a lot. And for Canadians especially, it's really hard to get the keto chow. The keto chow made this attractive looking cookie. This cookie is, is beautiful, <laughs> I have to say. It looks like something you would buy from the store. It is uh, moist inside. It's almost like um, a brownie cookie. That's the only thing. It's not crisp. And, you know, it could be something that's in the keto chow that keeps it soft. So if you like a crisp cookie, you know, you might, uh, might want to look at other recipes. Um, I happen to love soft, chewy, brownie cookies. So this one, love it. Um, I, I really think it's a great cookie um, and this is what Nina at Discover Sustainable had done with hers. She had made it look like this. I do have a couple of things, at least one thing that I'm going to change. I, I'm, I'm going to cook that for you in, in a bit. Um, so I am going to change a couple of things, um, but not too much. It's going to be pretty much the same. This, this cookie, I'll show you the inside. So this is just with uh, whey gourmet protein powder, chocolate chips. I think everything else was pretty much the same. Uh, Crystal used a protein powder that Canadians can get. I believe I've seen that one at Costco. So that, that is a good option. This is a great cookie. I love it. And, and if I didn't have this keto chow, <laughs> I, I would be making this one for sure. This one, uh, I mean, it's, you know, not throwing them away. I'm going to use them for something. Uh, maybe I'll use it as like in, an, in some kind of dessert recipe that requires cookies, broken up cookies or something. I'll think of something. I mean, it still tastes good. It still tastes good. Uh, it's just like it melted flat. So there, you know, there really is a difference in sweetener. So this sweetener with the allulose uh, it is what made it go so flat. This one, I used the sweetener that Crystal had recommended and, and that was definitely the correct sweetener to use erythritol based. It doesn't melt all over the place like the allulose does. And, and same here, I used uh, uh, the same type of erythritol based sweetener, no allulose, um, beautiful cookie. So, so there you go. So I'm going, I'm going to get uh, set up and um, I'm going to make these, these cookies for you because Nina sent me some more keto chow and I still have, uh, I still have a couple of packs of keto chow. I just have to figure out what flavor I'm, I'm going to use today, get my ingredients out, get set up and, uh, and then I'll be back to show you um, these really simple, super simple cookies, which you can, and I'll also talk about the substitutions for those of you who can't get keto chow. Now, if um, I will provide the link for Switch Grocery. Switch Grocery is the one place in Canada that I know of where you can buy the keto chow if you really want it. Yeah, it's pricey. And yes, I did order some for myself um, because I, I mean, I like to have it on hand for the odd thing. Um, I'm actually, uh, I ordered the big bag of the beef. Um, unfortunately, it's out of stock on Switch right now. So I have the notify me uh, button turned on or whatever it is. And um, I did, so I ended up ordering, I think I ordered the taco. 
it's on its way. Um, and a couple of the, the sweet ones just to play with them. Um, yeah, they're pricey. Um, I, you know, I'm the first one to admit it. I'm, I can be kind of cheap that way, but, um, you know what, if you, if there is something specific you want to make a special dessert, um, soft fudgy brownie cookies, uh, it's a good bet. So I'm going to be right back and we're going to make this cookie. Okay guys, I am back with my ingredients that I'm going to use to make the cookies. So hopefully you can see everything. I'm gonna try and squish it all together here. Let me see here. Okay, so these are the Keto Chow cookies that I am making. And uh, I'm using one and a half packs of Keto Chow. Uh, Greta, uh, Janet Greta sent me uh, some chocolate. And so what I've done is I weighed out, because I had to break a package, so I, I weighed this out. Um, it, this is uh, half, half of one of these, um, which is 48.5 grams divided by two. Um, I may be off by a you know, portion of a gram, but I, I think it's close enough. So I'm using one and a half packs of Keto Chow, I have some fat-free Greek yogurt here that I found from the store. I think any brand will do. I'm not going to use the xanthan gum because there is xanthan gum already in the Keto Chow. And I found when I used the xanthan gum, um, it, it was so thick that I had to uh, water it down with some extra almond milk, the dough. So I'm not going to do that today. So that's one of the changes I'm making. I've got some Redmond's salt here. I've got some baking powder. I've got my Vital Protein Collagen Power Powder. I'm almost out. I have my Amazon subscription coming, but I'll probably be out for a couple of days before it arrives. Did you know that you can save 15% if you get your daily use items by subscription from Amazon. Not everybody knows that, so thought I'd mention it. Um, so in the recipe, when I made this the other day, I did use the Bestie Brown Sugar, which is an allulose blend, and I want to try it today using just a regular erythritol blend. I mean, this. Uh, this is mostly, it says erythritol monk fruit blend. Um, it's mostly erythritol with a little bit of monk fruit extract added to it. So it's gonna act like erythritol. I just wanna see what that does to the texture of the cookie. Although I do love the brownie texture. I've got some carton egg whites. I've got some Lily's dark chocolate chips. Uh, I'm not going to use the vanilla extract. I'm going to use a few drops of my dark chocolate stevia here. Um, always looking for a way to make something more chocolatey. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, right? And then I've got my Swerve icing sugar, uh, confectioner's type sugar for this. So I'm also, with the Keto Chow version, uh, that I'm making, I'm not going to use my electric mixer. It just is too thick, I found. Uh, I'm just gonna mix it all together with a spatula. Um, so I think, I think that'll just, you know, work fine. I have my oven set to 350, and so I'm going to get started. I'm going to use a third of a cup of fat-free Greek yogurt. Boy, this is thick. This is thicker than the stuff I usually use. Uh, they didn't, they were out. I usually use Liberté. Canadians will know that brand. It's a really good fat-free yogurt. Um, the carb count is excellent. Let me just check what it is on this. I mean, there's like three ingredients on this. It's so good. Uh, the carb count here is eight grams for three quarters of a cup. And I believe it's six grams on the other one, which is why I usually get that one. Anyways, they didn't have it. I'm using this today. So there's my third of a cup. 
of very thick Greek yogurt. And then I'm going to add in my sweetener, quarter cup of this erythritol based brown sugar type sweetener. And two tablespoons of the, oh I should move this. Can you see that? Yeah. So two tablespoons of the powdered swerve. I turned my oven on to 350. If you saw my cookie video yesterday, you'll remember that I lost a bunch of meringue in the bottom of the oven and um, now I'm starting to smell anything I didn't get clean. So if you hear the smoke alarm going off, you're gonna know why. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I obviously didn't get it all. So I'm just stirring this up together. Actually, I'm gonna use my thicker spatula for this. Okay, so those are nicely combined. So I'm going to put in the rest of the ingredients. So uh, here goes my half a package. Of the keto chow chocolate. Then my whole package here. Okay, I'm going to amp up the chocolate flavor few drops of this uh, uh, dark chocolate, better stevia. I will provide links to all this stuff below, including, you know, Switch Grocery, which the Canadians can buy their, their, um, keto chow from if they so choose or like I said use regular uh, protein powder like from the store whey protein powder uh, but you will need to add in the xanthan gum if you use that I'm omitting that oh I need a I'm just putting in one scoop of this because uh, that is about all I have I don't even know if I have a yeah I have a full scoop here. And then I've got a few grains for tomorrow's coffee. So I hope my collagen powder comes early. My Amazon subscription. Okay, so that's that. Salt. I'm going to put in a quarter teaspoon of Redmond's Fine Salt. And one teaspoon of baking powder. This is a half teaspoon measure that I have here, so I'm putting in two of those. Okay. And now I really need those egg whites in here because this is very thick. You can see why this did not work that well for me with my electric beaters, even with the egg whites. So here we go. There's my oven. So far, no smoke alarms going off. That's good. Um, so quarter cup. Plus one tablespoon, it says. Now, I may need to add, like if this is still really thick, even without the xanthan gum, I might add another tablespoon of egg white. We'll see. Let's see how we do here. Okay. Still pretty thick, but looking good. This is a good arm workout. 
Okay, look at that. Make sure I've got all the lumps out. You know, I might add just, just another tablespoon of egg white. I don't see how it could hurt. Make it just a little more pliable. I mean, that's one thing, you know, I've never been afraid to kind of tweak a recipe. In fact, I don't know if I've ever followed a recipe exact. I, I see recipes as guidelines, and I know that logic doesn't always work with baking because to me, baking is a little more, um, you know, there's a little more science involved with all the things interacting with each other. I'm, uh, I am naive about some cooking and baking, but that I do know, that I do know that there's, sometimes those proportions mean everything depending on what kind of recipe you're making. But I feel pretty confident that adding an extra little bit of egg white is not gonna hurt this one. Okay, so I think I can work with that. I want some chocolate chips in there. So I'm using Lily's, these are the dark chocolate. Uh, that's egg white in there, that's okay. I'm using a quarter cup. Get out. There. We're good. Oops, turn off my battery there. Okay. What we have going on here is chocolate chocolate chip. Who doesn't want that? stuff out of the way. We're done with all those things. Okay. So I, uh, when I made this the other day, I got seven cookies, <laughs> um, which is fine. I like big cookies. So you may make these smaller and get more cookies. Oh, and I'm not even gonna bother using my cookie scoop because my cookie scoop got all jammed up with this thick recipe. So this is how we're doing it. Just going to make a big lump of cookie dough. Oh, well, maybe I'm only gonna get six today, I don't know. This is very unscientific because I'm not using, <laughs> they're all different sizes. Uh, like obviously I have more in these piles than I do in that pile, but it's okay. Now how you want to do this, uh, you know, macro wise is up to you. Like it's gonna depend on what kind of flavor of keto chow you chose for, for your recipe if you decide to make this. Um, and then how many cookies you get. I, I would just put all of the ingredients into something like Carb Manager, Fit Day, whatever you're using, Chronometer, and divide by the number of cookies you get. This is going to be your best bet. Looks like I'm only gonna get six today. Not sure how I got seven the other day, but I did. Now, if you go with making smaller cookies, like say the size of these circles on here, obviously uh, you're gonna cut back the baking time on this. I'm kind of going with um, Nina's baking time. She did 350 at 20 minutes to get these cookies. And uh, that was just perfect for the seven cookies. I'm sure it'll be fine for these, although I'm gonna check them at 15 minutes. 
see where they're at. Okay, so there's my six giant cookies. My oven is ready. So I am going to go and uh, put this in the oven and set the timer for 15 minutes. Uh, so I will be back with you shortly. Um, and uh, oh, I wanted to show you something I bought from Costco yesterday too. It's over here. So I'm going to be right back. Let's bring this over here. Look at this. Okay, the geek in me is really going to be coming out here. Oh, I got to get this chocolate off the counter. So uh, this kills two birds with one stone here. This is uh, a Pyrex storage dish set that I got from Costco yesterday. Um, I'm in Canada. I bet you you guys have these in the States. So um, before COVID, I went to the Bellingham Costco and I bought one box of these. And when I got home and started using these, I kicked myself constantly for not buying at least three boxes. The, this comes with two small ones. Where's my big ones? Oh, my big ones are all in here. So you get, well, you'll see when I open this. In, in the box from Bellingham Costco, I got two small ones, two large ones with lids. And I use those constantly for my glass storage containers because I really don't like to use plastic. I would much rather use glass. And I've never seen them at Canadian Costco. And, I, and it was right after that I bought these that COVID hit and I, was, I haven't been back to the States since. Um, so I haven't been able to go down to Bellingham and go to Trader Joe's and Costco. Haven't had a taste of Kerrygold butter. I know, first world problems, right? I mean, we have our problems here too. Uh, we've got atmospheric rivers hitting us right now. Uh, Huntington Village was, I believe, evacuated overnight because more water coming in. But anyways, check this out. It's from Canadian Costco and it has Star Wars characters on it. Um, I've been pretending to everybody that, well, I didn't care. I didn't buy it for the Star Wars. I bought it for the Pyrex storage containers. But I'm a huge Star Wars geek. I saw the original movie back in the 70s at the theater when it first came out before. Like, and, and I like was dragging people, oh, you have to go see this, you have to go see this. Um, I was a teenager in the 70s, so we had some cool stuff happening back then. Now, these Star Wars characters are, they're, they're wearing Santa hats and reindeers. It's really silly, but I love it. <laughs> Got the red and white containers. So go check your local Costco because these are the best storage containers. You know, they are really good. I love them and I use them and I needed more. And so now I'm really happy that I got them. So. There we go. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes when the cookies are ready. Hi, I'm back and the cookies are ready. Hang on. Okay, here's what they look like right now. You can see they're puffy. Um, we're going to give them a few minutes and uh, what you'll find is they will they will kind of fall and flatten and they'll be like the ones I showed you uh, earlier in the video. So uh, I'm going to be back in a few minutes after these cookies have uh, done their magic. Hi everyone, I'm back with these delicious looking cookies. So what happens after they cool down is they just kind of, they, they flatten out and Let's see, can, hopefully you can see that. Um, they, they kind of sink down and they become this beautiful, fluffy, not fluffy, they become this beautiful, soft, chewy, 
type of a cookie. So uh, that's kind of getting used to where things are when I'm operating by myself. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully the camera will focus. Yeah, I'll get better at this, I hope. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you like a, a chewy cookie, these Kiruchao cookies are great. Um, the other, you know, you can certainly make this cookie without the keto chow. Um, they don't quite, they're not quite the same. Like I just used a regular whey protein. And so maybe, maybe I will play with that a bit and see if I can emulate what happens here. There's all kinds of magic in the keto chow packages, obviously, because, um, you know, these come out looking like a store-bought fudgy brownie type cookie. So let me give that a taste because I did change up the sweetener in this one. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's really good. If you like a fudgy, brownie, squishy, chewy cookie, this, this is the one. So um, I'm going to provide you with all of the links. Um, I'm in Canada. Uh, I don't have any type of affiliation with Keto Chow. They've never offered me one or anything. I, I don't know. I'm not really good at going out there and doing this kind of thing. I, I just like to cook and I like to share. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this. I'll, I'll link to you where you can buy Keto Chow in Canada, which is at Switch Groceries. So I'll provide that link. And I know you can buy it on Amazon, like if you're, or, or I'm sure you can buy it direct in the States. I just don't have those types of details um, other than Amazon. Oh, there's Teddy. I'm going to get to you in a second. Just got to throw a ball. Um, I want to thank uh, Janet Greta for sending me the Keto Chow packets to try um, because that was kind of my first exposure to actually trying the packets. And, um, and, and I really, I really do like them. I mean, to, you know, I, I don't use a lot of prepackaged things. I am mostly carnivore. December, not so much. December is going to be very keto. I'll probably try all kinds of things with the packages that I have been sent and the ones that I have you know, bought from Switch Groceries. So that's going to be kind of fun. But generally speaking, um, because of, you know, different issues and things like that, I do try to eat on most days I'm eating meat. And, uh, and so this is just sort of a fun distraction for me. I do remember what it was like when I was starting keto and missing all of these favorite types of foods. Um, and, and so I know what it's like. And, uh, you know, I've been doing keto and low carb for quite a number of years. I didn't start out strict carnivore or ketovore on the first day. Let me tell you, I have probably had, you know, more keto junk than anyone because of the number of years I've been doing it. So I get it and I get what it's like to be busy. I'm a mom of four. They're all, you know, kind of doing their own thing now, but, but I get what it's like to be busy and making a shake and, you know, that might be your only meal of the day. <laughs> Um, until you get to dinner time. So, hey, I'm all, I'm all about that. So you're, you'll never get any judgment from me on how you choose to stay the course with, with keto. And if that means using stuff that is non-optimal, do it. Like, just do what you have to do. That is how I've lost 135 pounds. Yeah, I have more to go. And I'm definitely working on it. Um, but I know my limitations and I know December is challenging and um, I wish I could be one of those people who get on carnivore or something and they never deviate, they lose all their weight in a year and they live happily ever after. That is not my story. My story is like 10 years of struggling. <laughs> but it all adds up, you know, every little bit of struggle adds up and eventually you get there as long as you have more good days 
and then bad days. I go by the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule applies to business. It's a biz thing I learned in business, um, in economics and everywhere else. 80-20 rule also applies to how you eat. I, in my opinion. So, and, and, that, and this is not an excuse to cheat 20% of the time. Please don't take it like that. But what it, what it is, is do the best you can every day. And if you have a bad day, move on. Just move on. Do, do something else the next day. I, 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 that is the only way I can do it. Teddy. Teddy doesn't like it when, when I'm talking to other people and not him. He thinks I should be paying attention to him. Oh, you're mad at that tray too. It's on your mat. I'm so sorry. I have to put it somewhere. Anyways, life with life with a dog who has a huge personality. <laughs> get your own ball. He wants me to get that ball for him. Anyway, so uh, I, I get off track easily. I do have a little bit of, of ADD. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to going to link Janet Greta down below. I'm going to link Nina's cookie recipe down below. And I'm going to link uh, Keto Carnivorous Chris, her cookie recipe down below because it doesn't use Keto Chow. It uses whey protein that you can get anywhere, including in Canada. And uh, Switch Grocery and all kinds of things that I used in today's video. And uh, yeah, just have fun with it. And uh, you know, I hope this video was okay with just one camera and my uh, terrible skills at, you know, doing all this. But hey, I gotta, I gotta go. So not everybody is going to, uh, you know, now that uh, COVID restrictions are easing up, I don't have access to all the resources I had during COVID. So people have lives, apparently. Apparently they have lives. And so do we, right, Teddy? So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video. Trying to shoot my own video today. And the battery.